Hello. It's been a very stressful week, to put it lightly. A really fucking stressful week. And I, like you, have been experiencing a lot of anxiety the past few days and it will continue to be that way um, for the next few days. So I thought, why not make chocolate chip cookies? They're the ultimate comfort food. They're probably like my favorite dessert. And I, like many people, just love chocolate chip cookies. So my friend sent me recently Alvin Zoe's 48 hour cookie recipe and we were really intrigued by it. We wanted to figure out if 48 hour cookies were really worth it because I, like many other people, are really impatient when it comes to baking and when the cookie dough is ready, I just pop it in the oven. Um, I don't think about chilling the dough or doing anything like that. So I thought, why not test 48 hour cookies with regular cookies? And I know a lot of videos like the original BuzzFeed video uh, test the two minute versus two hour versus two day cookie. But for me personally, I don't ever really make two minute cookies. Um, I'm not that impatient. So what I really just wanted to figure out is if the 48 hour cookie is really that much better than the regular cookie, like the regular two hour cookie that anybody would probably make. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm going to make Alvin Zoe's 48 hour cookie recipe, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split half of it to cook immediately in the oven, just like a regular cookie recipe. And I'm gonna split the other half to put in the fridge to wait the allotted 48 hours and cook it at the end and see if there is actually a difference between 48 hour cookies and regular cookies. I've always kind of wanted to do these test videos. I thought they're really fun. Experiments in the kitchen are the best experiments. So yeah. Without further ado, let's get into it. And before I go any further, my name is Jess, if you've never seen me before. Please subscribe if you want to, if you're interested in just food videos by a mediocre and amateur chef, then go for it. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so I am about to brown butter for the very first time in my life in front of the camera, so that's more than a little stressful. Um, so I have a medium nonstick saucepan or pot over medium heat right now, and I'm gonna put two sticks of butter in it. So the butter is already melting pretty quickly, but I'm pretty sure browning butter is basically just putting butter over medium heat and kind of stirring it around until it sort of becomes this dark brown, nutty liquid. Is the finished browned butter it's really frothy but you can see how it's like this dark brown sort of color and now what I'm gonna do to sort of uh, return the water back to the butter um, is I'm gonna pop the rest of the ice cubes in there. Should be four ice cubes in total. Wow, that is just a beautiful color. Holy crap. Here is the finished brown butter with the ice cubes. Okay, cool. The butter is done. We're gonna just leave that aside and we're gonna get to the other ingredients. Okay, 
Now we have all of the dry ingredients here and I'm just gonna mix it around. I also realized I don't have espresso powder, which is something that the recipe calls for, but I'm sure that's fine. I'll just forego the sort of coffee undertones that the cookie might have. All right, now for the best part. We're gonna pour the browned butter into the sugar mixture. All right, now for the cookie forming time. Okay, so I don't have a cookie scooper, so I am just gonna do a half cup. These are gonna be some big ass cookies. And here, we're gonna put the cookies that we're gonna save for 48 hours, so. Here you go. All right, here is the finished product. So these I'm gonna put in the oven right now. Um, just gonna pop them in after the oven preheats to 325. And then these I'm going to wrap in plastic and I'm gonna pop them in the refrigerator for two days and we'll see what happens. That recipe also literally exactly made nine cookies if you follow like doing a half cup scoop, which is a huge cookie. So I'm curious to see how these will turn out because I usually, you know, make cookies on the little smaller side, but I don't know, why not go crazy?
All right. Cookies are successfully in the oven and now for the remaining 18 minutes, I'm just gonna clean the fuck out of the kitchen because it is a mess. Oh my God, they're so big. And this is with four minutes left on the clock. These are freaking huge cookies, oh my God. These are quite literally the biggest cookies I've ever seen. What the fuck? Okay, I'm just gonna let these cool down a little bit and we're gonna do the first taste test with just the regularly made cookies. Okay guys, this is taste test number one. We're gonna try out the regular cookie. Um, they're still fresh out of the oven. I let them sit out for like about 15 minutes just to let them cool down. Like, look at the size of this cookie. Oh my God. It's literally the size of my face. Um, thank you Alvin Zoe for just making like the, encouraging me to use half a cup of dough for each cookie. Like this is like freaking insane. It looks really good. Um, you can see that the edges are golden brown and it's still a little bit soft in the middle there. So yeah, we're just gonna give it a shot. This is the regular cookie um, with no 48 hour dough. Okay. Oh. It's not quite as chocolatey as I think it could have been. I could have added more and I also just didn't add the toffee, but honestly, it still looks like it has a good amount of chocolate in it. So let's see. I'm just gonna break apart this piece right here. Mm. Okay. That's a really fucking good cookie. Oh my God. Wow. Sorry, that was my hot water boiler thingy going off with the long ass song. Like this cookie, oh my God. Okay, I'm gonna try a little bit. Chocolate. Mmm, they're like the perfect density, perfect texture, slightly chewy, crispy on the edge. Also the brown butter really makes a difference. I had never done brown butter before, but I think I have to now. It's just so good. Wow. This like really looks like a big bakery cookie. Like before I tried making those like Leven cookies, like the really famous New York bakery, they were really big, but like not even as big as these. Like, mm. Chef's kiss. These cookies are amazing, 10 out of 10. So I'm really excited to see what, how the 48 hour one will compare, because this is gonna be really hard to beat. This is a really good cookie. All right, I'm gonna put this away before I eat the entire thing because it's the size of my face. But yeah, I'll see you guys in two days to try the next batch. It's a restaurant cookie. All right guys, two days later. Here they are. Ignore the really disgusting avocado in the background. Not sure if I see any difference in the dough. I know that the rationale was to let the dough settle for 48 hours, and that's sort of the reason why it's gonna taste better in the end, but I guess we'll see. 
All right. They're in there for 18 minutes. Heck yeah. All right, I'm gonna go eat lunch and I'll see you guys in 20 minutes. All right, cookies part two are out of the oven. They're looking beautiful. And we're just gonna wait for this to cool before we do the final taste test. <sighs> All right guys, it's the moment of truth. It is now Friday. I am feeling a lot better than I was on Wednesday when I was baking these cookies. So even though it's been a stressful week, I'm glad that things are turning around, question mark. I mean, as I'm filming this now, we do not know the results yet, but um, no regrets on making cookies though. This was a great stress bake. And I encourage you guys to just bake and eat good food when you're feeling stressed out because honestly, there is no better antidote to stress. So we are sitting here now with the two cookies. This is the cookie from two days ago. So this is the regular cookie, like a two hour cookie. And this is the 48 hour cookie. So they're looking pretty similar. I mean, this one just came out of the oven. So it's a little bit fresher looking than this one, but you know, kind of can't help that, I guess. But yeah, basically the only different things that I did with this were that one of them just sat out for two days in the fridge. So basically I just wanted the only dependent variable or the only variable that we're changing in the entire thing to be the time. Uh, I used the same recipe, right? I just halved, you know, when I was gonna bake which. Um, I'm explaining this badly, but I think you get it. Because yeah, I'm just curious, does letting dough sit out really affect the taste? Like, will it taste better? So yeah, this is what we're gonna figure out right now. So like, I'm kind of cheating here, but I'm heating up this, this uh, cookie from two days ago. So the regular cookie, I just heated it up a little bit in the toaster and I'm gonna test the 48 hour cookie. So yeah, just, I wanted to even the playing field a little bit by toasting the cookie from two days ago, just so, you know, we're mimicking the aura of freshness. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. I'm gonna just try. Ooh. Amazing. So this is the two day cookie. Mmm. Yep. Mmm. It's really good. I mean, we knew this. The first taste test we knew. This is a really good cookie recipe, but. Mmm. Very interesting. And now I'm trying the regular or the two hour cookie. Hmm. Honestly? I can't taste much of a difference. I'm reheating the um, the two hour cookie and just seeing if we can get a little hotter and I can try to taste a difference. Honestly, this is gonna be a test of how advanced my taste buds are because this is gonna be a difficult one. I mean, I wanna say that I like the 48 hour one better, but again, maybe it's just because they're fresh cookies and Obviously fresh cookies are gonna taste better than two full day ones, right? So. Okay, we're back. Here's what I think. I think that they're really quite similar, um, obviously because they're the same recipe. So there's not gonna be a lot of obvious differences but I will say, I think I do like the 48 hour cookie more because like even when I took the 
two hour cookies out, you know, two days ago, I didn't like them as much as I do the 48 cookies right now. So if I'm just comparing my reactions to the freshly baked cookies from two days, two days ago and like the 48 hour cookies like just now, like freshly baked and taken out of the oven, I do think I really like the 48 hour cookies more. Um, and maybe, maybe it's cause I'm in a better mood. Um, and maybe there's a lot of other factors going on, but I will say, I feel like there's just something about the 48 hour cookie one. Like it's just, honestly, these cookies are just the perfect texture. Like the, is this gonna focus? Like there's something just so amazing about the texture of this cookie. And I think even more so the texture now after 48 hours is more pronounced. Like the center is just clearly so chewy and moist and the outer edges are golden brown and like chewy too, but like in like a denser, like harder way. Like I do kind of agree that if you let the dough sit out a little bit, I think you can get more complexities in the texture and maybe even the taste. I mean, I think the taste is still quite similar because again, we're using the same recipe, but I do think there's something about this cookie that's a little bit more special than just like the regular like two hour cookie. Um, and I don't know, who knows, maybe like when the cookies both like cool down, there's gonna be some slight differences, but for now when I'm trying to compare sort of like a fresh cookie to like a reheated, still pretty fresh cookie from two days ago, I do think the 48 hour cookies went out. So I think the 40 hour cookie is the winner. Um, just because I think the texture is like the biggest thing I can point out. You know, of course, maybe a lot of factors went into that. Maybe I baked it a little bit better this time. I don't know what happened, but yes, I think marginally, like very small margin, the 40 hour cookie is better, but I will say if you're impatient and you just want to get those cookies in the oven, you want to give your cookies out to your friends the next day, you don't have 48 hours to wait. I think you could just go, obviously regular cookies are great. Um, this recipe in particular, I think is great whether you're letting the cookies sit out or just popping them in the oven. So I would highly recommend just trying out Alvin Zoe's cookie recipe. Honestly, this is one of the better recipes that I've ever tried. And I've been on the hunt for a while now for a really good chocolate chip cookie recipe. So yeah, I would highly recommend trying this recipe. And don't be afraid if you don't have two days to wait, just pop them in. Oh, and one thing I do also want to say is browning the butter really makes a difference. I had said before that I never browned butter before. I think from now on I will when it comes to cookies. Like it's a really easy thing. It's really hard to mess up and I'm no advanced baker myself. So I was a little bit afraid, but I learned that browning butter is really not a big deal. It's a really easy thing to do if you just want to be a little fancy and like sort of elevate the flavor of your baked goods. And yeah, maybe next time I'll add the toffee. I'll actually get sea salt and sprinkle it on, sprinkle it on. I think it's all about the details too. But for this, it's a really, really great basic chocolate chip cookie. You know, if you're really just starting from scratch and you don't even have to add the toffee or any of the other things too. So yeah, I think that concludes my review of this cookie and comparing whether dough is better when it sits out or not. If you got the time, do it. If you don't, it's still a damn good cookie. I think that is all for this video. Um, I'm probably just gonna go back and eat more cookies soon. But yeah, I hope you guys got something out of this video. I hope you guys are taking care of yourself. It's been a really long past few days for everybody. So yeah, just bake yourself some cookies, relax, and I'll see you guys in the next one.